Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is a deep dive on the Southern Thracian nations and AOR units in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. It's taken from a longer video I did with Mausolos on the history of the Anatolians and Thracians. So check that out in the description and the unit videos where we go into a deep dive on all these new units you're going to see in this video. Check those out guys, like and subscribe. But without further ado, enjoy hi guys welcome back i am red zed and today we have another fantastic video lined up for you we are back with mausolos in this ras weekends video taking a look at all the minor thracian and anatolian factions like we did with the greeks last week so welcome back mausolos really nice to have you back bro yeah it's great to be here again um i mean there's uh, quite a few more factions in front of us because we couldn't <laughs> stop adding factions yeah. <laughs> in the players. So, um, yeah, here we go again. Yeah, exactly. Classic. Lots more factions have been added, uh, like we said last week, all the Greeks. Uh, but how many Thracian and Anatolian factions are there then going into 0.6? Um, this is the point where I should have prepared myself better. <laughs> I think there's about there's about 12, 12 to 15 Anatolian and Thracian factions together, if you also mm. count the um, generic ones, because just like we did with the Greeks, I can already um, spoil this at this point, um, where we have the Greek city-states to break up the rebels, we did the same with the Thracians and the Anatolians, and of course these factions also serve um, to simulate rebellions and make them more fun and more immersive and just to have more factions on the map. Yeah, they also have some starting settlements, as you can see there, for instance, mm. in Lycia, because it is attested as repulsing the Galatians in the 270s BC. It was the only city, if you go back to the, yeah, that there's Tlos, Tlos, or whatever you pronounce it. Mm. Um, if you remember the last video, and, and I don't just mean you, but also the people watching, most yeah. of you, <laughs> most of you, the people watching, um, if they've paid attention, they will remember that Priene was the only, or Priene, or whatever, was the only Greek city in Asia Minor to um, actually defeat the Galatians when they arrived, and Tlos, Elysia, was the only other town, but of course that is Elysian town, or Elysian, or whatever you say. Um, so yeah, um, that's why they got some of these starting settlements, the Anatolians, um, the Anatolian factions, some of the more important cities, which however could not be represented as their own factions. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so in terms of the Thracian and the Anatolians, and often, you know, a lot of the time, when you look up a lot of these Thracian factions, you can hardly find anything online about them. So I just kind of wanted to know, like, why are the Thracians so underrepresented in a lot of mods? And also, like, why are they so sort of unknown, I guess, in terms of the, you know, the common culture, all that sort of thing? Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, the thing is that um, obviously a lot of people will know that Spartacus is supposedly Thracian, but as far as I know, that's not even <laughs> that's not even 100% confirmed. <laughs> um, I think it may just have been a, a gladiator fought in the style called Thracian. Yeah. Um, it's good to, there's, there's good evidence for him being Thracian, but it's not 100% confirmed and that's what people, most people would say, oh, they know Spartacus, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Then the next level is, um, people may know that the Peltasts were originally a Thracian thing, fighting with a shield and a javelin as a skirmisher to have sort of professional skirmishes. That was something um, the Thracians had from early on. And then people who already play Total War mods, they will know the Urum Fire, the special Thracian melee weapon, this kind mm. of... Um, yeah, what well, can, can you compare with uh, the forks-like thing? Um, so um, I think that's what people will know. But you're right that there's a bit of a lack of knowledge about the Thracians, which is which is interesting because for the ancient Greeks they were very much familiar, as you can see in their position, mostly in modern-day Bulgaria, but also um, uh, parts of modern Turkey, Romania, um, Serbia, um, and Greece itself. Um, you can see that they were very close to the Greeks and they had very strong context to the Thracians from early on and imaginations of Thracians as the, um, originally the northern barbarians but at the same time also neighbours um, from which you could take uh, military innovations like the Peltas but also the cavalry 
fighting in Thrak influenced the Greeks in the 5th century BC and the 4th. And uh, my colleague Jotel will probably know to more uh, know to say more about this. Mm. Um, yeah, there was a lot of common influence, and um, it is easy to to do to depict them, to imagine them like the Greeks depicted them as the barbarians. When it is also true that many Athenians, especially in the fifth century, like Miltiades, um, who I think fought at Marathon, um, him and other other Athenians, they went to Thrak to create their own empires. Mm. And um, they would actually go there and hunt Thracians for slaves. So basically, the Greeks would be the ones who are the raiders, and they would raid Thrak. So it wasn't always the other way around. Yeah, because there's a story which I think gets often overemphasized from um, Thucydides, where during the Peloponnesian War, a band of Thracian mercenaries committed a massacre in a town in Boeotia. Um, and of course, that happens with mercenaries, and then. Um, it was attributed to the Thracians being absolute, um, yeah, barbarians and terrible and mm. and whatnot. Um, it was the massacre of Mycolessos in 413 BC. Um, but yeah, I think it's something which um, could have happened with other mercenary groups as well. And it's not really that much down to them being Thracian because there's a lot of common influences. If you also go south of the Thracian coastline, um, there's a big island. Samo Thrace, Samo Thrake, whatever, Samo Thraki in, in modern Greek, to the west from where we are now. Yeah, there it is, yeah, it's Ptolemy is. in the middle. And on there, there was the so called sanctuary of the great gods, which was originally um, a Thracian thing, but um, the Greeks very much started revering some of these deities as well. And of course, there was the so called um, Interpretatio, Interpretatio Greca, which means that the Greeks interpreted foreign gods and equated them with their own, just like we know between Romans and Greeks. But the same happened between Greek deities and, and Egyptian ones and mm. Celtic gods and Greek gods, but also the Thracian ones. Um, as for why are they so underrated, it's difficult to say because all well, the ancients there were, were important, but they just don't seem to have a lobby like some of the other people from this era. Um, there's no... TV shows or series about Thracians. Yeah. There's no books, like novels, or anything like that. I mean, I can only speculate in that regard, but um, yeah. it seems they are lacking a bit of a lobby, so to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, when they had more restricted faction lists, they often decided to have Illyrians instead, for instance. I think that's what RTR 6 did. They replaced the Thracians mm. with Illyrians. But, yeah, to be honest. I can't really say why everyone. Yeah, <laughs> ignore them. Different reasons. So I, I think. Suppose. I think in a lot of mods, they just kind of combine the Dacians and the Thracians together. So yeah, like what are the yeah. what are the main differences between the two in terms of culture uh, and way of life? Do you know like you know how different they they really were um, between mm. each other? Because obviously, mm. visually on the map, we can see now that the Thracians have. Uh, I'm assuming, is that a Greek-style settlement? Is that the same as a Greek one? Yeah. Whereas the, Dac uh, the Dacians, of course, have the barbarian-style settlement as well. So there was, was there a huge difference between them uh, and the Dacians? Um, yeah, that's, that, that's a hotly debated question from mm. antiquity to today. But as you can see most easily, um, it's what you already said. The Thracians were closer to the Greeks. They are more uh, located more to the, towards the south. They are um, they are um, influenced by the Greeks and they influenced the Greeks as I already mentioned. And while the Dacians are further removed from from Greek culture, even even though there were influences on the Black uh, Sea coast, we have the uh, Pentapolis. We saw that last week, and the Getai faction next to them. Of course, they also had common interaction, mutual influences. But at the same time, if you go to the inland, these were not really really that close to Greek culture. So where there would have been some kind of influence and interaction between the cultures, the more important influences on the Dacians would have been the Scythians, and that's why they were also famous for the horse archers, the Dacians, mm. and um, a more nomadic people, especially in this period, in 270 BC, because of course um, history knows them most from the wars against the Romans. Everyone know the wars against Trajan, obviously, when Dacia was conquered by the Romans after several bloody wars. Yeah. Um, it really started before that because you have Burubista, the great Dacian king in the first century BC, 
And I think Caesar fought partly fought against them and then did he plan to crush him? And I think that was the case that he really wanted to to, to conquer Dacia. Um yeah. but Caesar was um was murdered before mm. he could do that. <laughs> But funny enough, at the same time, Bulabista was also murdered in the same year. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he had a really great Dacian Empire at that point, which um, fell apart after he'd been murdered. Mm. So, in any case, um, yeah, the, the easy distinction is that the Thracians are um, very much um, connected and related to the Dacians and the Getai, but the, the, the Dacians are uh, more to the north, so they have more Scythian influences, while the Thracians in the south have more to do with the Greeks and more interactions with the Greeks. Yeah. Okay, cool. Really interesting. When we get to um, the Anatolians as well, I'll ask you a couple of questions about those guys, but we'll get there uh, to, the, to those questions when we get to there. So, in terms of the generics of the Thracians, which is the sort of uh, Thracian faction we can see, this uh, the white one here uh, with the eyes and the mouth. Is that an eyes and a mouth? Or is that a, a beak? I don't know. <laughs> is that? I think it's uh, an eyes, isn't it? Uh, but they have a f- face, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so they have a few few different settlements. They've got uh, Apros down here. They've got a couple uh, further north. We've got Rata Ratiaria, uh, and they've got one over here, definitely, and maybe a couple of others dotted around. Um, so the same thing, I guess, thinking wise uh, as the Greek city states faction as well. Just an added Thracian faction in there. Uh, to re- reduce the amount of rebel settlements, I guess, uh, and represent a bit more of a, a you know a Thracian uh, Thracian nation out there rather than just uh, rebel settlements. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with those guys, in terms of their unique units, we'll go through unique units again, guys, like we did last time. Uh, they've got the Thracian Peltas, the Thracian Infantry, uh, and the Thracian Long Spearmen. But my personal favourite, from what I've seen. <laughs> is the Tynoi or the Thynoi Clubman. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mausos, do you want to talk us through who were the Thynoi and, and why are they wielding clubs? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, so, um, you will probably have noticed that we have a faction called Bithynia yep. in the mods, which is um, um, actually... Um, on the on the Asi- Asiatic side of the Bosporus, exactly. Mm. And the Bithynians were Thracians who emigrated into Asia, and and they obviously Hellenized and founded their own kingdom there. And they were f- they're famous for inviting the Galatians over into Asia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, which is a bit, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> problematic from a historical point of view, maybe. But whatever. In yeah. any case. Yes, the word Thinia or, uh, or Thinia or whatever is, is in Bithynia. Yeah. But the actual Thinia or Thinia is on the European side. Hmm. And that is where our good clubmen are from. And um, yeah, they represent the Thracian people on the European side. Um, probably those Bithynians who didn't make um, the, well, he didn't join the migration into uh, Asia Minor and stayed behind because there were other Thracian groups, probably the Phrygians, which is just around Bithynia in Asia. They had some Thracian um, for ancestors as well. Yeah. So a lot of Thracians uh, in early times already went over to Asia, which again confirms the close connections they had with the Greeks. Mm. And um, as for our dear clubmen, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they are a very special unit because they use clubs and they um, are supposed to have an extra strength at night. I don't know if you can actually put this bonus, yeah. but they're described by Xenophon in the Anabasis because um, Xenophon, we talked about him last time when um, when um, we were speaking about, what was it? Um, when we were speaking about uh, the uh, uh, Trapezius, yeah, Trapezius, yeah. because... Um, it is um, the uh, Xenophon was on the march of the so-called 10,000, 10,000 Greek mercenaries who um, fought for the Persian pretender Cyrus the Younger around 400 BC, mm. and he was defeated. And then the 10,000 Greeks tried to make their way back from Iran 
to Greece and they went straight up through the mountains and ended up at Trapezus and when they saw the sea at Trapezus they shouted Talata Talata the sea the sea mm. and um, that was their recognizing that they were saved however being mercenaries <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Soon, um, they went to the west from Trapezus through several towns and offered their services mercenaries and in several um, different regions and they made different stops and they eventually got, got to Byzantium and um, there they um, took part in a conflict and some of them stayed behind in Asia and some fought over there and some over here and there they also met the, uh, the Thunians or the Thinoi or whatever and um, there Xenophon um, observed them and he noted that they were feared for they are skills at ambushing people at night. They were mm. like the Thracian vampires who would <laughs> <laughs> jump in the dark and um, yeah, kill you with their clubs. I was going to say cut you into two, but you can't, can't really do that with a club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Smash you over the head, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think he doesn't actually specifically say what their their main weapon is. I think he implies that they use javelins like other peltasts. But um, Christopher Weber, eminent uh, historian and Thracian military, he, he, he says that they would have probably used clubs. So that's how they got into the mods. And um, they will be available in the region, uh, in their home region as an AOR unit. And um, they will, of course, also be available to the Bithynian kingdom. Mm, awesome. Cool. I can't wait to use some clubmen, to be fair. <laughs> Interested to see how that goes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> full uh, full caveman total war there, I guess. Uh, if you're uh, <laughs> if you want to go for it, uh, full yeah. by that's gonna be that's gonna be a meme, you know. Full uh, full <laughs> Steinoy clubman <laughs> armies stacks going around and absolutely ruining people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe I've just come up with a new video idea. Anyway, um, <laughs> so let's move on to someone slightly different. So an actual faction. Fantastic. Let's go with Pionia over here. Starting off with three settlements just north of the Antigonids, just north of Pella as well. Um, so where are these guys in history and uh, how did they get on against the Antigonids, I guess, would be their main enemy at this point. Yeah, absolutely. So Pionia, as you can see, uh, is more or less located in... in the modern um, former Yugoslavic Republic of Macedonia and um, they were very close to the actual Greek uh, ancient kingdom or yeah let's not go into that but the kingdom of Macedon yeah and um, there um, control the cities of Bilazora, Stoboy and Skupoi and um, they were kind of famous for the cavalry because um, they, they used to be one of the noisances, a uh, thorn in the Macedonian side, but Philip II, the father of Alexander the Great, yeah. kind of subjugated them. And then the Paeonian cavalry, which is their unique unit, it fought um, on the campaign in Asia against the Persians, um, quite a f uh, significant numbers, and they also appear on the coins of the Paeonian kings. And um, there uh, is much debate what happened after wars in Paeonia, but there seems to have been an independent kingdom at this period. However, um, in 270 BC, it's still there, but it would soon come under um, the pressure of the, uh, the Danians to the north, which are, who are not affecting yet in RIS, but we will eventually get them, um, are more or less a Dorian faction, but that's, that's not really sure. And um, that's, um, the, the Danians would become a great threat to Macedon, and hence Philip V, I think it is, at the end of the 3rd century BC, he, in 219 or 217 BC, he moves towards um, Paeonia, he takes um, the capital Bulazora, and that is the end of the Paeonian kingdom. So mm -hmm. even though they had um, a famous history up to this point, as a stable and long-lived, well, Thracian kingdom with some Illyrian influences as well, um, they're famous for the cavalry, they, str they really struggled historically in the 3rd century BC, so we will see how they will do in our campaign. And um, of course, they were a bit of a thorn in the side of the Macedonians, but as it turned out, still better than the Dardanians, who were much more aggressive and much more 
dangerous. And you can see it up there from the settlement names already, Dadanikon, Furion, for instance, Dadanopolis, that the Dardanians are going to be added <laughs> to these settlements at some point in the future. Yeah, <laughs> cool. So with their Paonia, they've got the Paonian Cavalry and the Agrianian Infantry uh, yeah. and the Agrianian Archers. So is the Agrianians, is that just another tribe from this region then around here? Yeah, the Agrianians were a Paeonian tribe which um, swore <clears throat> loyalty to Philip II. And um, the Agrianian, Agrianian infantry, the, the Paltusts, uh, pretty much, they um, formed an elite unit of Alexander the Great's army and later also the Antigonid armies because they kept their oath of loyalty until the very end, basically. All right. And uh, at Gaugamela, even though they were not armored and some of them probably wore helmets, some had maybe a bit of armor, but they were basically peltos, some had axes, some had javelins, some had um, Thracian style short, uh, short swords. And they were faced with the chariots, with the Persian Persian chariots at Gaugamela. And um, imagine being some uh, a guy without armor and <laughs> with a helmet, with a small shield and facing a chariot uh, drawn by four horses charging towards you it's, it's probably not the yeah the um, easiest thing <laughs> um and it speaks testament to the bravery of the agrianians that they did not rout instead they would jump on the chariots and kill the riders and then basically um take over the chariots and that's how they stopped them and defeated them and that made them a legendary elite unit in the in the Antigonid army, so the Antigonids can recruit them as well, but since they are Paeonians, they will be available to Paeonia, and they are really one of the best light infantry units in the mod. Yeah, that's cool. That is really, really cool, because I have, I think I've covered them in the one of the AOR videos, and yeah, that's really awesome. That's really awesome. So uh, let's move across to Denthelete. Denthelatai. Yeah. Denthelatai. There we are. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they've got a couple of uh, couple of regions in here, right next to the Paeonians. Um, so what was their significance at the time then, I guess? Yeah, so the Denthelatai are really a bit more obscure, but some people um, think they were, uh, again, um, important in the genesis of the whole Peltast um, Peltast um, tactic and armament and all that. They also depicted Peltast on their coins, and I think they. Can you can you go to the map again? Yeah, they have it as a faction as the faction icon as well. They have mm. a Peltast. Yeah, <laughs> Peltast. Uh, but not not very creative, maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> all the Peltasty things come together in them, so to say. No, um, the Denthelatai, um They lived in the in the in, in the interior of Thrak, as you can easily see there I think um, and they were rivals of some of the neighboring tribes I think it's the Bessie in yellow or is it the oh no it's the the Medi yeah yeah the Medi in yellow and the Denthalatai they uh, were mortal enemies and they fought each other and mm. the Macedonians of course laughed that fact because they could interfere <laughs> between the two and try to meddle in their affairs or they would just be distracted and not attack them <laughs> yeah but um, yeah, at various points in history, the Denthalatai um, would also leave their um, precious homeland and attack other people, of course, um, <laughs> yeah. because that's what they do. Um, I mean, now that's a bit of a, of a, of a stereotype about Thracians again, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, yeah, but the fact is that the, we also know about uh, their raids and um, later uh, they plundered, I think, um, the supplies of Philip V again of Macedon, who annexed uh, Paeonia. They, even though they were his allies, they plundered the supplies. <laughs> yeah. And later on, they would become allies of the Romans and had a famous king called Zetas, who was blind. Um, but of course, all this area um, it was eventually um, conquered as well by the Romans, especially after the Bastani invaded it, um, a Germanic tribe which had settled near the Black Sea. And then um, yeah, the region was heavily Hellenized, and under the Roman Empire, they spoke Greek as well. Okay, cool. Nice. 
so yeah, uh, they don't have any unique units at the minute. So uh, is that just because there's no real data on them, I guess, to uh, to give them anything unique? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's difficult. I mean, as you can see, um, it's, it's mainly about the Peltas, so they already get Thracian Peltas. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I think uh, for now, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, cool. So uh, on to, I mean, it goes out saying on to the matey, <laughs> who are right next to them. Uh, so did these guys fare any better than the uh, Dentheletai then? Or were they, again, meddled in too much by the Antigonids? I'm sensing a theme here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Macedon, of course, was a powerful kingdom. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, um, Philip II again, uh, Alexander's daddy had already put them down. But when he was besieging Byzantium, they... Um, they um, rebelled, and according to Plutarch's uh, Alexander biography, um, Alexander the Great himself, only 16 years old at the time, was sent out for his first command. And um, he went there and put them down and uh, defeated the revolt. And um, Spartacus may actually have been, if he really was Thracian, he was probably from the Medi. Mm. Um, at least that's how um, Plutarch's description has often been. Um, uh described and so was his wife um but the Medi had a bit of a check out history as well of course the macedonians also intervened in their area because they like to do that with the neighbors and i mean <laughs> you don't uh, you, you don't remain the dominant power of greece and the adjacent regions for 200 years if you don't yeah <laughs> if you don't do that, to be honest so um what are we what are we um criticizing them for <laughs> um, <laughs> what you have to do as king i mean you're, it's not about be, uh, being uh, yeah, having too much mercy and all that so um yeah but but um there's also an interesting passage from um which may be interesting from i think aristotle about a weird animal which he found found there which may have been um how you pronounce it in english bisons a bison Bisons. yeah I, I was. Sounds... I thought we were going down the goat conversation again. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're not creeping this time. This time's about bison. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they, they lived there, and people really um, spoke about this a lot. Um, it may have also been an auroch. Our our ok. <laughs> yeah. I have to be honest, you pronounce that. But yeah, the, the, any of these strange animals. So um, yeah, they're probably famous hunting and they really hated the Denthaletai so we have evidence for them yeah. in fighting and again for a Macedonian player um, the decision will be do you want to take out the media immediately because they only have one town mm. um, or do you let them leave them to the infighting because I can guarantee you in my AI campaigns um, they do always go for each other <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool we make them, we, we make them hate 100% um, so after two or three turns, they will always go to war. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. and you know, the media usually win, even though they only have one city. But that's that's total war. The smaller factions, they often manage better. <laughs> yeah, well, they've got a Thracian run for four eye in here, and I'm assuming these guys will probably have a run for four eye or two. But that unit. In case you don't know, guys, in case you've not seen my Adrician or my Bithynian videos on the rosters, go check them out. But the run for four I, they're pretty pretty good <laughs> they're a very very good unit uh so yeah uh really nice unit they're armor piercing uh and they frighten nearby enemies so uh yeah pretty good unit so that's that might uh might help them i guess if uh if the dental don't actually start with uh with any of those boys but they are a very good unit so uh get them if you're playing as the thracian no i think i think we've said everything and we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll you'll be back soon because there's a lot of more a lot more IS content coming up, even though most of it is gonna be without me. <laughs> but it will be with Red Z and it will also be with a certain Japanese villain. <laughs> <laughs> what, Mr. Cherry? Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't call him a villain he'll he'll uh you know he'll uh he'll get upset and make me make more videos tonight <laughs> oh no you see it now he's killing me huh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> ah yes but anyway uh thank you very very much for watching guys it's been a pleasure thanks once again to mouse for both of these videos 
Honestly, the breadth and the depth of knowledge is quite astonishing, to be honest. I've learned so much during this. I hope you guys have too, as well. Uh, I mean, if you knew all that, then you must also be an ancient history expert and historian as well. So, honestly, I can't see anyone out there not having learned an absolute ton from those videos. So, thank you very much, Malzlos. It really has been a pleasure. Which means thank you in Greece. Yeah, <laughs> more than Greek. Hence is it Greece. Um, yeah, thank you very much to to hosting me and having me once again. And again, thanks to everyone watching the video. And um, yeah, you should all look forward to the release of RIS. And now the debate starts. Which is the best faction? Which one do you want to play? And <laughs> who should conquer Asia Minor? <laughs> if the answer is not the Seleucids, then you're wrong. Um, but no, no I'm joking. Yeah, no, I'm joking. I, well, I, yeah, I want to play as uh, as uh, older, uh, and, uh, and, uh, not Anatolian. Sorry, Gangra. Where's Gangra? Get Gangra and just chill. Yeah, Paphlagonia, like you say, just chill. Again, I didn't realize where they were. Uh, maybe I've got a mental. Maybe they were so chill that they're like camouflage. They don't. They're not even like. They're not even. I think that was the idea, to be honest. Yeah. They just got a little hill. They put like nets over it so no one can see it, and then they just all get uh, get there and, uh, and just chill out. And are like, we're not going to attack anyone, bro. Uh, we're just going to calm down. Playing yeah, tall always... as Gangra. That's that's your challenge, guys. <laughs> Playing tall as Gangra. You just have to start as Gangra, finish as Gangra, no expansion, and see whether you become the richest nation yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, Please, we want to see a screenshot of, of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good luck. I don't think you'll become the richest nation in the world. Spoiler, uh, but yeah. <laughs> you, ne you never know. The gold is flowing in Gangra. That's why uh, they hid out in the hills for so long, because they had so much gold flowing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Maybe Midas visited them and, and touched every building. <laughs> well, that's why they were so quiet. Maybe Midas ac accidentally touched, like, nearly everyone. And there was only yeah. a few people left. And they were just like, well, this is pretty terrible. We've lost all our friends. But now we have a lot of gold and we don't want anyone to know. So, uh, you know, they started burying all the bodies. Uh, gold bodies. I don't know what I'm saying right now, honestly. <laughs> I really don't know because gold, which you do not sell, is not really worth anything, is it? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, but they no, they were they were hiding out. You know, that's why they chilled out though. They were hiding out in case the raiders came. They were worried about the Galatians and the Thracians because you know, as as we've talked about, the Greeks framed the Thracians as being very very violent and uh, raiding all the time. Uh, but yeah. Uh, they were just worried. They were very, they were very worried about uh, about people coming. That's why they hid their gold, of course. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> let's ignore all that conversation. And uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Make sure you do like and subscribe. Um, that would be fantastic. Stay tuned for more RAS Weekends content coming out tomorrow and next week. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video.